I've been feeling Completely overwhelmed Every time I try to get up I get knocked right back down You're the blues doctor in Cincinnati I don't know, a couple of weeks after I met you You've been in Nashville So you've been in Nashville since May 15th, 96 I figured I'd be back in Cincinnati three months later How often does a house gig really work out? You're in the same house gig Yeah, well, yes and no um, For the first um, 11, 12 years, the same house gig uh, then the ownership changed. Uh, there was a dynamic between a couple of the owners that didn't work out. How uh, never that happened? Yeah, really. <laughs> there was a woman involved. But anyway, so that that happened, and uh, and we wrote wrote it for a few more years. So it was probably thirteen, I think. But and it, it just got weird. It just got weird. So I left and uh, moved over to BB King's. Went there for about three years, and then new owners came and, and reopened Herbert Street, and so I came back. And because as soon as they opened it, they were from out of town. They went all over, over town telling people, "Yeah, we we got the Blues Bar. We're going to get it open again." And everybody said, "So you're going to hire Stacy back?" You know. So, and, and the guy's like, "Who's the Stacy guy?" So he came and found me, and uh, and we talked, and and you know we started like a couple nights, and then yeah, you know, so we do three nights every week. Um, weeknights and then I'm on the road on weekends and sometimes I do weekends there. So it's really been a great gig and I never understood Nashville before I got here. But this town, and now it's going crazy blowing up. They anticipate doubling our population in the next 10 years. <laughs> yeah, which is crazy. But, um, but you know, the majority of people during the week, there's very few cities that, well, very few cities that you have 60 60 plus venues having live entertainment seven nights a week in, in a six, seven block area, you know, or, or something like that. That's unheard of. That's unheard of. And, and then the fact that literally any night of the week, seven nights a week, you'll see people out walking on the streets, you know, all the way up till one or two in the morning because it's nothing but convention people and tourists as well as the locals that love music and they just come out and they go see stuff, you know, and so it's, it's been great for me. I've been able to get a lot of fans from all over the world because of it. I've been able to tour Europe because of it, do festivals in parts of the country that I never would have been exposed to before, and not have to leave home that often. So it's really been a perfect thing. I really could just stay here, but but I, I like travel. Oh, of course. So, kind of, so where best are, of both worlds. Where are you going next? I don't remember. It's people... <laughs> There's, it's like if I want to find out where I'm going, I have to look at my calendar, and if I want to find out how to get there, I have to look at my GPS. I have no clue anymore. You know, it used to be you knew how to get places. Now you just put in the GPS and follow it. So uh, the last time, my, last time I interviewed you, we, you were doing the record off oh, with the vinyl release. Everything, ah, everything analog. The vinyl came in the other day. Did it? Yeah. How's that? How's that? Hey, over there. I, I hurt my neck, so I can't uh, move. Them. Yeah, by the way. By the way, I have my neck brace off, so we can do. The, he had a motorcycle know, rack. Around the corner we're not giving there, him any slack. <laughs> on top of that, there are some vinyl records. Where all those boxes are stacked. Look and see if you can find one. We will show the vinyl. This is my very first LP. I had a 45 when I was back in college. So found it. Oh, dude, that's beautiful. Uh, yeah, we only pressed up 500. Yeah. And, and, but the uh, people that want them want them. Yeah, and 100 <laughs> people, you know, 100 people pre bought them. So those are there. Um, you know, I just started selling them like, I don't know, three, four days ago. It, maybe two or three days they've been on my merchandise thing. And I'm selling them like three or four a night. First of all, it's a different record, it's all acoustic. Um, I, I only played acoustic guitars. I did play lap steel on it, you know, slide, but I did dobros and acoustics and cigar box guitars. Um, used, brought in a guy that played upright bass and, and drums and percussion. And then my buddy Kenny Calvin from Cincinnati played harmonica on three cuts. And that's it. Right. You know, so it's not really with my band uh, because the guy wanted, a, he saw me do an acoustic show in England. And that's what he wanted. And he was like, I want that acoustic pop. 
and because I wasn't as known over there, he wants to break me over there, so that's why he wanted the covers. I worked out an interesting deal with him. Um, you know, I've always put my own records out, and, and I've been offered to sign with a couple labels, and it just, I don't know, maybe I was stupid, maybe I should have signed, I, I don't know, but it just didn't seem like, you know, in a niche market that I'm in, we're not talking about selling 100,000 units or more, and it just seemed like I could probably financially do better off just putting them out and selling them from stage. And it's got me some attention. Now, granted, I probably would have got more press, a little bigger, you know, one of those things, you know, make less and get, you know, get more. But I don't know, you know, they, they just didn't feel right, so I didn't do it. The, with this label, um, we basically worked out a deal where, where I just leased them the record for five years, and anything I sell from stage in U.S. and Canada, I can manufacture and keep 100%. Wow. And anything that they sell over there um, goes under the, the contract, and, and they manufacture it, and they do the promotion over there, and, and they handle all the digital sales. So I don't do a ton of digital sales, so I lose my digital sales, but hopefully I gain Europe. So, you know, so that that was my thing. It's like, it's like it really wasn't a deal that could hurt me in any way. And, uh, and, and it got me a new record, you know, because I probably would have sat and not done one for another six months or so. And uh, the next thing we put out is going to be a, a reissue. The, when I first came down here, I did a double live set from the club, Bourbon Street. So the new one, uh, it, I'm doing a 20th year anniversary. I'm remastering it putting it out, taking three or four songs from each of the other four live projects I did, putting that into one disc and remastering that. And then I'm recording uh, another 10 or 11 song disc of my current band live at that club. So it'll be basically a live retrospective over the last 20 years. And, and it'll be a four disc set, a four CD set that I can sell for 20 bucks. You know, the, the live show is really my strength. I mean, my studio recordings were nice, but but I'm a yeah. live performer first, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so I really think that that will be. Um, I, I think that's something that a lot of people have kind of asked for. I still get a lot of requests for that CD, and it's been out of print for like the last five years because it's like I got now I got like eleven CDs and a DVD and a and a documentary. I got thirteen projects. Out. Yeah, if I set all thirteen projects up, people look at it and I go, I don't know what I want, and then they don't buy anything. You know, so, right, right. so I bring when I go to festivals and stuff, I'll bring, I'll bring maybe four, or five at the very most of, of my projects. I'll make sure I have at least one or two live projects, and the latest, like maybe the last three studio. And uh, we've been really fortunate. Every uh, the last. Four records, every one of them is charted in the top 15 on Billboard blues charts. And uh, uh, I've had two or three CDs that, that won uh, like Blues Society's Record of the Year type stuff. And, and I had one of them that had a Grammy nomination. So, I mean, it was like, you know, not, not doing too bad for putting them out yourself. You know. yeah. But that's the way that goes. So are you working on another one? No, I plan on... on um, Recording in August, uh, recording that that live disc in August, right. and having it out by November. Fantastic. So, and then I go back to the UK. Uh, I had to cancel my UK trip because of the net, um, but I'm going back in November, and so we'll promote promote this record, and because um, most of the shows I'll do over there will be acoustic shows, and I'll have a couple shows where we put a band behind me. And I'll bring an electric guitar with me. Well, I actually don't have to bring guitars because I'm endorsed by Epiphone. So when I go overseas, um, I just stop into their their offices in London, and I tell them ahead of time, and they've got them all packaged up for me, and we just take them. And then uh, uh, the last place I'm at, they'll come pick them up at the hotel. So, and thank you to the good folks at Epiphone. Mm -hmm. They treat me great. They really do. Uh, you got a few sponsors besides them. Yeah, um, I got uh, AKG Microphones, uh, Rapco, Horizon Chords, uh, Diodario Strings. Um, we have a, the Summer NAMM show in Nashville this week. 
I actually met, I found this little amp that I really like a lot. And uh, because they don't endorse me, I turned their nameplate around backwards. <laughs> And everybody says, dude, what is that custom amp? And I'm like, it's not a custom it's amp, a... it's a... <laughs> so, but I don't want to talk about it, because what if I end up getting with another amp company? And actually, I'm going to invite them to my show this weekend, uh, and maybe get them to see that, and maybe get them to talk to you turn encourage around. me to turn the plate around. <laughs> so this is actually good, because there's some people that, that are in town doing some shows, and some special parties and stuff that now I can go to on Friday night. And hey, everybody from NAM, because NAM's been here, Summer NAM's been here a lot of years, uh, the whole time I've been here, which is how I've gotten most of my endorsements, they, uh, almost everybody, they know that I'm at Bourbon Street, and so they'll come and find me between tonight and Saturday and Sunday. What else you wanna talk about? I was just gonna say, I think we got it, didn't we? Yeah. And, you know, no more motorcycles. I hate that. You're selling the motorcycles. Selling the motorcycles. I hate that, man. I'm even going to sell everything. And I know this sounds, this sounds like pain. It's almost like I'm breaking up with a truck. My wife. Not only am I selling the bike and all the like, you know, like, like jackets and, and helmets and all that. I mean, I'm, I'm selling shirts. I'm selling anything that says Harley. Bandanas. I'm even selling my Harley ring. Uh, you know, and I was not this huge Harley like like you know so many guys that ride Harley. Right. It's like the only thing they own. Everything that says Harley. Harley. Like every T-shirt, every shirt they got. I got maybe two shirts that say Harley and uh, two T-shirts and and, and, a, and one jacket that says Harley. But they're all there. Yeah. And just because I don't want the temptation, because I, I will miss it. I will miss it because I love it. But I'm going back to convertible Cadillacs, man. Late 60s convertible Cadillacs. Now the gas is cheaper. <laughs> I can afford it, right?